migration tensions are on the rise on Mediterranean shores. Tunisia has become a main stepping stone to Italy, Europe's gateway. With that have come deals and accusations of abuse at the hands of Tunisian security forces. On Sunday, Italian Premier Giorgia Maloney hosted Mediterranean leaders for a migration and development conference paving the way for donors fund. We are joined by Ahlam Shemlali, a migration researcher at the Danish Institute for International Studies. Thanks for making out time for this interview. Thank you for having me. EU deals and financial packages to manage migration with partners such as Tunisia or Libya have seemingly done little to change underlying dynamics. Which effects did they actually produce? Well, uh, millions of euros have flowed in from European institutions and member states to train, equip and advise Tunisian security forces and basically militarize uh, Tunisian borders. Uh, but what we have seen is it hasn't stopped migration. Instead, it has only uh, bolstered the security apparatus and also accelerated the concerns about Tunisia returning to uh, into a police state once again. When referring to migrants in Tunisia, who are we talking about? Many organizations um, that work uh, with migration put these numbers between 20,000 and 50,000 uh, of migrants from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and here the biggest group is uh, Ivorians. They represent one third of the total, uh, followed by uh, Guinea and Mali. Um, and many of these countries actually have free visa agreements with Tunisia, uh, which means essentially that uh, the vast majority of migrants residing in Tunisia arrive in a legal manner through these visa agreements. Uh, and also there are thousands of students enrolled at uh, Tunisian universities uh, as well. And lastly, you of course also have uh, refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, currently, UNHCR, which manages this, uh, have put the numbers as around 9,000 uh, registered refugees and asylum seekers. And of course, there are many that are not registered, so the numbers uh, could be uh, much higher. What about the migrants who end up stuck after being blocked from crossing the Mediterranean? Essentially, uh, what happens is uh, because of uh, and in the absence of a Tunisian uh, migration policy and, and framework, uh, many are just left to themselves in this uh, protection limbo, which essentially means that um, they don't have any access to uh, protection or obtain legal status. Uh, and therefore, they are pretty much left to themselves to fend for themselves in marginalization and, and very precarious uh, situation, which is why many, uh, as we see now, numbers are increasing, try to cross uh, again, because there's nothing left uh, in Tunisia for them to, to secure a livelihood or uh, protect themselves. Why has this fax incident been seen as a turning point in how Tunisia deals with migration? We have seen a new level of brutality and impunity uh, from the Tunisian side, uh, as well as the, the backdrop, because this is, has been happening while the EU has been negotiating uh, with Tunisia. I would like to stress that what we have witnessed in SPAX has in many ways been just uh, the latest in a long chain of events that's been brewing in the country due to the absence of uh, an official uh, migration policy, as mentioned, but also intertwined with the years of EU pressure to contain uh, people on Tunisian territory uh, and, and really to, to pressure Tunisia into uh, having thousands of, of migrants uh, stuck and stranded there without having any infrastructure or humanitarian um, assistance. Um, and so it's the result of these tensions coming together and also the underlying anti-Black uh, racism in Tunisian society. Of course, the very uh, deep, deep uh, crisis the country is facing with a collapsing economy post-pandemic food shortages and inflation, and also the very uh, increasingly authoritarian and unpredictable uh, president. And now we are also witnessing the, the horrific consequences of this because uh, there are reports coming out now that men and, and women and children are being found dead in the desert uh, where people have been uh, bust and, and in, expelled to the, to the Libyan side. They're dying of, of heat, thirst, uh, with no water or, or food uh, because of this now. 
Ahlam Shimlali, thank you for your insight. Thank you. Thank you for having me.